In this video, we're going to look at an area of the software called the component tree shown to the left of the screen in the modeling tab in VCarve and Aspire. This is a very important area of the software if you plan to work with 3D components as it allows you to control and organize them and dictates exactly what you will see in the 3D view. We'll call this result the uh, composite model and it'll be used to calculate any 3D tool pass. And the component tree in VCarve and Aspire are almost the same, but we'll start out in VCarve and towards the end of the video, we're going to look at the options in Aspire so you can see the difference uh, between the two. But to start, let's go ahead and open up our new file. So to start this demonstration, let's go to open an existing file. I'm going to choose this file right here, which is the Apple example file. So let's double click that to open it and you'll see that it opens up uh, into our software. Now we're going to go straight over to our components tab over here. And you can see we've got one level listed with two components. Now, if we actually pop over to the 3D view, you can see the two components in question. We've got the apple and we have the panel here, as you can see highlighted in red. And the component tree is actually a very important part of the software. Uh, if you plan on using 3D objects in your job, it helps you to control and organize them and it dictates exactly what you're gonna see in your 3D view. And what you'll see in your 3D view when you come to uh, use the software to create toolpaths and your preview. And another thing to note is that when your software creates a brand new job, it will automatically create uh, a level one by default um, without any content on it. So, so it's up to you to actually populate that with what you like. In this case, I've already got two components on my level one, uh, but if you open a brand new file, you will always have a level one, but with nothing on it until you add some components to it. Now I'm just gonna tile our views briefly uh, so we can see the 2D view and the 3D view. And you notice that if I click on the apple in the component tree, it highlights it and it brings it to the front of the 2D view here. This is the bitmap representation of it and it brings it to the front of the stack. And if I do the same for the panel, this will bring it to the front. You'll notice how it's still in the background here on the 3D view as in the apple is proud of the uh, panel. But in the 2D view, it's actually brought that bitmap representation to the front. And this is really handy because if you've got multiple components going on, uh, but you need to be able to work on a component that's underneath other components, this is a useful way uh, to be able to view it and to make edits to it. Now you see we also have some checkboxes here. Now actually you can turn these off and on as you need to. So if I turn off the one for the panel, for example, it turns off the component so you can't see it anymore. If I do the same for the Apple, it does the same thing. You can turn them on again and the same applies for the level. So you can turn the level off entirely if you want to and you can do the same thing from the components so you can turn off all of the components and turn them back on again if you want to you can actually rename your level as well so if you click it once with left mouse click then slowly afterwards click it again you'll be able to rename that if you want to the same applies for your components and you can also right mouse click and you can go to rename level or rename uh, the component as well you notice we also have some uh, icons next to each of the sections, and these represent the combined mode they're currently in. If I click and drag my mouse over it, you'll see that the level is currently set to a combined mode of add, and it has a base uh, Z value of zero, or the base height in this case. Uh, the same applies for the Apple, so we've got a combined mode of add, base Z is zero, total height 0.2474 inches. So you can see how useful it is. You can get some uh, good visual information about your components here just by hovering over it. And as for our panel, combined mode of merge, base is zero and the total height is 0.3457 inches. Now you'll notice that the difference in uh, combined mode is visualized because you can see this is merge and this one is add and they are different icons for each of these. Now if we go up to the level, we can right mouse click it and access some more options here. So we have a combined mode, which is add, subtract, merge, lower, multiply. We have show, which is to show only this level. Uh, we can show this level, we can show all but this level, and we can show all levels. We can hide this level, we can hide all levels. We can also select components on that level. We've got the clipping mode, and there is uh, a video on level effects which is related to this video, so you can learn more about that. Uh, so you can apply, update, or remove clipping, and the same applies for mirroring. You can do no mirroring, left to right, right to left, top to bottom, bottom to top, top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right quadrants. We can insert a new level, which will insert a new level in here. And then you can delete your level. Now, you can see it's grayed out at the moment. That's because there's only one level, and there has to be one level uh, at all times in the software when there's a new file. Now, if you added a new level in, you would be able to delete that new level. And if it had any components associated to that level, uh, the software would give you a warning and say, do you want to delete this level because the components will be deleted along with it. So uh, do keep that in mind, and then you can rename the level as well. Similarly, you have the right-click options uh, for the components. So if I right mouse click the apple here, we can go to the combined mode. We've got add, subtract, merge, lower, multiply. The 2D preview option here allows you to move the uh, 
bitmap representation of the component in the 2D view to the front or the back. Now this is really helpful because if you've got more comp components on your uh, worksheet and you have one effectively buried under the other ones and you can't quite see it, you can use this option to make a semi-permanent change to move it to the front so you can uh, visualize it and make any changes that you need to. You can copy this component, you can also duplicate it. If I click duplicate, you'll see what happens. It actually puts a, another uh, apple into both our worksheet but also into the level and I can right mouse click and delete or I can just click delete on the keyboard with that selected to get rid of it. So we can then go into the delete option you can see here, we can rename it. We've got show to we can show only, uh, you know just the apple, show only this, show all but this, show all. Uh, so hide, hide this, hide all, properties. And if you come into the 3D view, you'll notice we also have the option here, and this actually opens the component tree up as well. So if you click on that, you can see we've got the component tree here, and I can show you this on the right hand or the left hand side here. If I right mouse click and choose properties, we get the component menu up here as well. But it's the same down here, so you can make any quick edits or for the component tree down here as well. Uh, but you can also make them in this menu too. And then finally, we have the option to move to level, so we can move. Uh, component to another level if we want to. So if we've got several levels and we need to put this onto a new one, uh, we can do that and we can also create a new level from here uh, by moving this to a new level and then we can uh, name our new level appropriately. And you can also do this for the level. If you double mouse click the level, you notice the, the component properties pop up here and then you can make any changes for the combined mode. You can add a base height and that's actually quite a good option where you want all the components on a level to be at a certain base height. So do have a play around with this setting and see what you can achieve and what interesting effects you can achieve with this. And do note that if you change this, when we close this out, it will be reflected here as well when you hover over it. It's that base Z value that you can see there that will be changed depending on what the uh, base height is in your level. Now, currently our composite model has the apple being added to the panel. But what would happen if we wanted to add in a third component? Now, keep in mind this is VCarve and we can only use pre-created components or clip art. If this was Aspire, then we could just use our own modeling tools to create some brand new components uh, if we would like to from scratch for almost any need. Uh, but for now, what we're gonna do is go over to our clip art tab. So you can see here I've downloaded the clip art that is associated with uh, VCarve desktop here. So I've downloaded that from my VNCo account. I'm gonna come down to ribbons and I'm gonna choose this option here for ribbon number four. I'm gonna double click that to bring it into the software. And when you double click it, the software will bring it into the center of your job space. Now you can see it's brought it in to the 2D view and the 3D view here. In the 3D view, it's a green silhouette. In the 2D view, you can see it's up front here. Now if we go back to our components tab, you can see that is currently set to merge, so the software has defaulted the combined mode to merge, which means the ribbon is being merged into the result of the apple being added to the panel. So it's actually hidden inside the composite model, and that's why it's green. Now you can see I've got the transform handles in the 2D view and the 3D view. Now if I hold shift, I'm just going to size this up a little bit so I can change the size of it. I can also size it down if I want to, so I can size it down if I need to. And then what I can do is actually pull it down here. And you'll notice that when I made it larger than the side of the panel or the bottom of the panel here, it's actually poking out and showing red parts to the model as opposed to just green. So the red bit is actually where the model is showing the selection and the green part is where the model has intersected or merged with the other components. Uh, in the background here. So just to explain the differences between the two, I'm just going to size that down just a little bit more. So I'm just going to select it, grab that handle and just hold shift while sizing that down to roughly the size I want it, which is about there. And we'll let that go. Now what I can do is multiple options here. I can right mouse click this uh, component and I can go to properties from here. I can also access the menu here. So I can increase the base height in this to bring it up a little bit. I can also right mouse click and I can just change the view here. And I can choose this option here to increase the base height. So I can end, either end, click on it and enter a value. Or I can simply left mouse click and drag that up to where I want it to be. Uh, so it actually pokes through the top here of the panel. So I can get a bit more definition from that ribbon and I can see it clearly. In fact, I'm just going to go a little bit further with the uh, base height. I'm just going to keep dragging that up. So left mouse click, drag it up just a little bit. And I think about there looks pretty good. So you can see how powerful the 3D view is. So now you can quite intuitively just click, drag, 
and you can also enter a specific value if you want here as well if you want to be really precise with it uh, and you can see there's little bits very still merged so I'm just going to click onto the base height and drag it up just a little bit more and that is looking pretty good so I can close out of the properties form now and I can use a right mouse click in 3D view to move around the model to look at my composite model and be happy with the results. I can double check all these and I can use the view control at the top right here to move this around as well to make sure everything's looking as I want it to. So I'm just going to click on, uh, click on top and bring it back into the centralized view. So now what we have in our component tree is a ribbon being merged into the result of the apple being added to the panel. Now. If I want to, I can go ahead and select the ribbon. I can turn it off and on. And if I wanted to, I could delete that if I wanted to, to get rid of it. Or I could simply just select it and click delete on the keyboard. But for now, let's have a look at a different instance. Uh, so we're gonna come over to look at a different example. So again, we're gonna go to open an existing file. We're gonna go to our tutorials folder and we're gonna choose the crest example. So let's double mouse click that to bring it in. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at it in the 3D view, and then we'll go over to the components uh, tree. So you can see here in the components tree that we have multiple levels with multiple components per level apart from level one. And if I tile my views, you'll see we have the bitmap representation here on the 2D view of the components as well. Now you can see if I just turn off the levels that we can see the components associated with each level and what we're actually going to do is turn off all of our components and we're going to have a look at level one so let's turn on level one and you'll see that it's an add uh, combined mode for level one but it's actually a merge shield now it currently isn't merging with anything so this could be set to add if you wanted it to uh, but let's turn that one off for now and let's turn on level two and you notice on level two we've got uh, five different components here. And if I go to the three feathers and I right mouse click and I choose to show only this, we can see just our feathers here. And then if I turn on our crown, which is set to the merge mode as well, you notice what's happened is that the uh, feathers look like they're coming in from behind the crown because the crown is slightly more proud of the feathers. But because we've got it set to merge mode, these feathers are actually merged with the crown, but they look as if they're coming from behind it. And if I do the same with the fleur de lis, you'll notice that it's actually merged with the crown. So it looks like it's in front of it, but it's actually merged it and there's a little bit standing proud there of the crown. And if I turn on the other smaller fleur de lis, you'll see the same thing there as well. And then if we come to level three and we turn off level two, uh, if we show only just a banner, so go to show only this, you'll notice that currently it's very proud. So you can see how if we turn on our flourishes behind it, they look, because the ribbon is so proud, they look like they're tucked in behind, but they're actually set to merge. So they've merged in with the banner, but they look like they're tucked in behind it because the proud uh, height of that ribbon. So it gives it a really lovely effect and you can see how powerful it is to use the level effects and the combined modes to create some really interesting designs. Now I'll just turn these off for the moment. Now, much like the components within a level, the bottom level, if I turn that on and then turn on level number two, uh, the result of these merge components will be added to the top of whatever's happening in this level. And equally, when I turn on level three, which happens to be a merged level, uh, it will merge in the results of whatever is happening in this level. Uh, now, that could be an add component or a subtract component in there. It doesn't matter. It will just take the result of all that and merge it into the result of the level two being added to level one. And that's how you get the result that you're seeing here of the composite model in the 3D view. Then if we actually select a component, we can actually drag it by left mouse clicking and dragging in that level. We can take it to another level, so we can drag it into another level. We can also drag a level, so we can actually just click a level and we can just drag it up above or below another level. And you'll see how that affects uh, the 3D view over here. So you can see here, instead of the fleur de lis being added to the shield and then the ribbon layer being merged in, we actually have the flourishes and the banner being merged into level one, and then we have the crown and feathers 
being added on top of that because the level is an add level. So to correct that, what I can do is just click on level three and I can drag that back up to where it was and that will now fix that for us. So not only is it important to have the right combined mode set up within your level, but you're also gonna to want to do the same with your levels and have them in the proper order to give you the result that you would like to have in your 3D view. Now you may have noticed I haven't addressed these minus symbols here. Well, what I can do is I can click those to collapse our list of levels here. So if you have a particularly long component tree list, you can use this to organize it so you can collapse and expand the levels by using the minus or the uh, plus icons respectively. Now, one last thing we should really cover is grouping components. Now, we have the option inside of our component tree to select a few components or select a number of components and group them together so that any transform options you make to that group will apply to everything with inside that group. So for instance, if you wanted to group up all the stuff that's on level two, what I can do is I can click this bottom component in the list, hold shift and click the top component in that list. And you notice what it's done is it's highlighted all the uh, components there and I can right mouse click, I can choose group. And you'll notice now I've got a group uh, here under this level. So I can now actually just expand my view just a little bit so we can see that. And what I can now do is I can use the minus option here to collapse that group as well as the plus option here to expand it. And you can see it's its own little group. And if I select that group, all the components within that group are selected on the 3D view here as well. I can just right mouse click and I can ungroup there as well. Now, speaking of the minus and the plus again, just important to note that if you're gonna be collapsing your views like this, it's important to have your levels named appropriately so that you can make sure that everything is organized so you know what is on each particular level or indeed on each particular group. Now that covers the options in VCarve for the component tree, but let's have a look at Aspire. So we're just gonna open this file back up, but we're gonna take a look at what it looks like in Aspire. Okay, so now that we've got the file up in Aspire, you can see the composite model on the right-hand side and the bitmap representation on the left. And you can also see a plethora of modeling tools available to you in Aspire that you don't have in VCarve. So these really allow you to make some really uh, powerful and custom edits to your models, as well as creating models from scratch in Aspire. So highly recommend uh, that you check these out if you are interested in Aspire because we do have a free trial of the software. Now as for the components, uh, if we go to the component tree, you'll notice if I right mouse click on a component, I have two new options. I have the option to export the 3D clip art and I have the option to save as a sculpting brush. Now, if I choose to save as a sculpting brush, what this will do is it will literally save this uh, component as a sculpting brush to use in the sculpting tool. So that's how you can uh, create some sculpting uh, brushes of your own or some custom brushes of your own. But you can also export as uh, 3D clip art. Now this is very powerful because what you can do with this is you can save off your single component or a group of components or your levels so you can import them into a new instance of Aspire. So when you export out a group of components, they'll come into a new instance of Aspire as a group and then you can ungroup them if you'd like. Uh, if you choose to export out a uh, level, uh, what you can do is you can then bring that into a new instance of Aspire and then you will need to ungroup it because it actually comes in as a group. So you need to ungroup it and move it to where you'd like it to be. So both very uh, powerful features that you can take advantage of uh, so you can customize your layouts and organize your components between different sessions of Aspire or indeed creating your own custom clip art library. But with that, that concludes our component tree guide. I hope you've found this insightful and useful and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.